The Jet Set Breakfast with Michelle Constant. The time of the writer is on Go Ahead in KwaZulu-Natal and it runs from the 16th to the 21st of March, i.e. from tomorrow for the week. And it really is a space where authors get together and can talk about the kinds of books that they've been reading, but also that they're talking about and writing about and writing as well. On the line with us, we have Zanele Lamini. Her second novel, Wounds of Ignorance, won the Durban UNESCO City of Literature's Best Book of the Year 2019-2020. Zanele, thank you for joining us. Good morning. How are you? I'm very well, Zanele. You winning the um, UNESCO City of Literature's Best Book of the Year. What does that mean for you as an author? Um, first of all, it means um, that I'm able to reach the community that uh, I, as a writer, actually write for. So um, that title has given me that opportunity to have the book in the library to be accessible to even younger people and people who actually do not know that history and mm. the people who lived through it as well. So, uh, it, yeah, it's an amazing thing and it's an amazing program as well. And um, it means that particular point of actually being able to reach the people that uh, our writing is supposed to reach. You know, Zanele, last week I uh, was with a driver, a tourism driver, and he spoke to me about his background, where he came from KwaZulu-Natal in particular, I think it was from Tongat, and he was talking about uh, the, 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 the tragedy of the story, which indeed is what Wounds of Ignorance is about, and his own, he had had his own experiences, I think his father had been killed, and It was extraordinary because he told me as I had been reading Wounds of Ignorance. And I wonder if you could, for our listeners, just tell us what the book was inspired by and certainly some of the storyline of the book. Um, So the storyline itself is actually um, based on the citizens or rather than ordinary people like me and you. Um, Where in the early 90s, we were caught up in the middle of the political violence. So um, it was inspired by those times. It was inspired by a village that was that is near ours that was literally wiped out uh, of people. People were killed there, whether it was children or adults, but they were killed. Some actually fled without knowing where they are going or if they would even be safe wherever they were going. So it was a very traumatic um, experience because we were not sleeping in our houses. We would be sleeping in the gardens or, uh, you know, as long as we were trying to be safe. We were not in homes because homes were being burnt at the time. So, yes, that is a storyline. And the storyline focuses the most on a, a young boy. A young boy, because uh, during those times, I remember some of my brothers as well were recruited to be part of those groups uh, in the what in the name of protecting our village. Yeah, they did not know any better, and also they didn't have any choices because it was either you come through or you would be killed. So it focuses on those types of of men that went through that and growing up in that situation growing up there and uh, actually because years later we had democracy and it just it was like we're now acting like nothing actually Hmm. happened yes exactly So now we must all be happy merry you know and when we look back we actually find that a lot of those men uh, did not find any healing and I think most of us as well it's not just the men even the women that went through that uh, we did not get any sort of healing or what we call um, therapy for Mm. post-traumatic issues, you know. know, So it focuses on that and that now we are just dealing with ourselves and trying to heal at the same time, but there are things we cannot talk about because it all seems like if we talk about it, it's like, are we going back there? Are we trying to ignite the war? Whereas talking about it actually does uh, some form of healing. I mean, so, even in therapy, I, I, I want to I want to talk about the healing and the mental health uh, issue and angle that you take up very strongly in the book as well. Um, and but but for a moment, if we may go back, is that when we look at the 
the, the, the people, the young people that were caught in the crossfire of the ANC IFP violence. I mean, what I found really difficult about the book was and really shocking was once again going to the idea of child soldiers. You know, we've heard from the rest of the continent, you know, the battles that have occurred and the young children that have been dragged into those particular wars. And yet we forget to say how many young children were brought into that ANC IFP violence and had to use, I mean, ultimately were also using drugs in order to do the kind of shocking things that they had to do. It's it's a very powerful moment um, in the book. I mean, you describe it, a couple of incidences that left me really feeling quite cold, actually. Um, the research around this must have been very difficult for you. Um, it was. Um, it was difficult. And uh, first of all, I had to ask some mothers yeah. who lost their son during those times which it was difficult for them. I remember when I interviewed uh, um, a few of the grandmothers in that village, they had gone back. And when I spoke about it, one of them said, why are you talking about it? You are are saying it as if it would come back, and I am certain that if it would come back now, I wouldn't survive. Hmm. So the research was talking to, to them. It was talking to my parents who knew better and saw better at the time. And also, it was also in, in doing the reading. But also for me as a writer, it it took a lot, I must yeah. say. Uh, it was very difficult to, to do because I, I think that I actually sank into the emotion yes. of, of, of the story and coming out of that was a bit of a challenge as well. You talk uh, about, and you've mentioned this earlier, this 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 concept of healing and yeah. um, certainly mental health, and and yeah. we we know in this country that mental health is is something that is never given enough support engagement, even as we move forward. And earlier on in the show, we even had someone talking about the Truth and Reconciliation commission and the idea that those that were responsible were not actually held accountable Um, with regards to this book and your own experiences even in the medical space do you see mental health potentially growing as an important aspect to how we live in this country um i actually believe that we have a chance that's great. And it progressing in, yeah. in a good way. Because I've I've seen a lot, especially on social media and in particular Twitter, we talk a lot about healing, we talk a lot about um mental health, especially for men, because and especially for men in black communities. Mm. Because when we grew up or when we grew up, we know that men don't cry men don't they need to be strong, you know, all of those things. And those are the very things that um, affect the most the mentality or the mental uh, of, of, of a person. Mm. So we now talk about them. We Even other men actually engage each other to say that we need to, see, we need to seek help. We need to seek mental help. It helps and it makes us better men as well. It makes us better partners. It makes us better fathers. It makes us better people in the community. So I think we have a chance at that and uh, I really hope uh, our government uh, and also the health department as well is mm. really um, concentrates or rather takes it seriously. So now the ment- yeah, I mean, the mental health is the foundation. If you are healthy mentally, you are able to do better. Yeah. Yeah. So Nella, in closing, if people want to get Wounds of Ignorance, where would they find it? Um, it is available in most of the shops uh, nationally, and also they can get it from me as well. I'll have copies at the time of the writer, and I'm also available on all social media platforms. Uh, it's Ed Zanelli underscore zero nine on Twitter, Zanelli yeah. uh, Lamini on Facebook, and Ed Zanelli Lamini underscore rights on Instagram. So, but it is available in most of the shops. I look forward to meeting you during the week, Sanele, and uh, well done on a difficult book to read, but also quite quite an easy book to read as well. I mean, it 
it was one of those strange books where you, you actually do want to get to the end as hard as it is. I appreciate that. So Nelet Lamini, she's the author of a novel called Wounds of Ignorance. It won the Durban UNESCO City of Literature's Best Book of the Year 2019-2020. And if you are interested in the history of South Africa, KwaZulu-Natal, post-94, then certainly this is the story um, where you get to understand the terrible battle, basically civil war, between the ANC and the IFP during that time.